Hello defenders, welcome back to our channel. So welcome back to specially our web application pen testing series. In this particular series, we are on challenge number 19. And this particular challenge is really interesting because it's one of its kind in the entire platform. Before using the proxy and after using the proxy, when I use a proxy, I'm not able to use HSTS based websites where it does not allow me to do a man in the middle attack, right? Now here, what I did, I switched off the proxy, logged in into the HSTS site. Now re-enable the proxy again. Now I should be able to use the site. Now I go click on web hacking. Here we have the same, uh, this thing. It opened this. Now I am going to brute force this particular column. One is the username parameter, then the password parameter. So how do I do that, right? So first, this is the burp suit. Burp suit is a very popularly, uh, a very popular known MITM tool. And what I do is I go to the proxy setting. Here on the proxy setting, again, I go to proxy setting. Here it is running on 8080, right? Localhost 8080, lovely. Now, uh, the browser, I mean, the proxy is now listening on port 8080. Now the browser only should send the data here, right? So let us say test, test, click, right? It's saying login detail invalid. Now I'm saying intercept on. When I switch on the interception, look at this, I type in test, test one, right? Look at this, the data is being captured here. The data is being captured on the browser and I'm not forwarded the data. I can either drop the data or do anything of my uh, liking, right? Now, what I do is I right click this payload and I say send to intruder and intruder is a module here. In this module, what I do is I go to this one, right? I say add. If you notice, when I click add, there is a symbol like this. So in the username field, I've added something and in the password field, I've added that symbol. What does that mean? It simply means in the username field and the password field, I am going to do the brute force. I am going to feed in the uh, data from a file, right? And what is the kind of attack that I am going to do? Look at this, sniper, battering ram, pitchfork, cluster bomb, right? Now let us read about this. This attack uses a single set of payload uh, and one or more payload positions. It places a payload in the first position, then each payload into the second position and so on. So here we have payload one, payload two, right? Okay, now I go to the payloads option, right? In this, I have payload set. Let us see what we should use. There is a brute forcer. Runtime file is there. Let us see what is that runtime. Configure payloads on the runtime. Okay, that's lovely. I would probably want to use that. And let us see what other options are there. Okay, let us use runtime file. The file that I just uh, used, it's called user.txt. Let us see if there's anything that happens. Okay, look at this, there is an issue here. So there is a payload that is going only on, uh, only one payload going, right? We actually need two payloads to go, why? Because we have two details to be pushed in, right? Now let us see that. Sorry, here, positions. I clear it, I add, I add, uh, I think I may want to use the cluster ROM. Yeah, now you can see payload one, payload two, two options are available, right? Payload processing, you can define what is there 
we have multiple options but here i am not going to pick anything okay let us see if this default payload set 2 is empty okay here again i'm saying user this is both the username and password for both look at this for one i have said this is the payload for this two i've said the same thing is a payload let us try the attack okay look at this lovely it is trying this username password username password username password username password let us see if there is some point in time it is actually able to break it wow it's trying these many attempts one of the error codes look at this there are some error codes where the status code is 302 right and rest of it is saying 200 see all of this is saying 200 but when the username is bahadur and shah is the password then it says 302 right let us first try that bahadur and shah say intercept of b a h a d u r bahadur that is lovely you were able to do a brute force on the web page with uh, the username and password two fields brute force and you say username use user.txt password use user.txt when you are able to say both of it as user.txt and say start attack it was able to clearly give the username and password here right and boom you have the password congratulation wow that's a pretty big password so i am going to use this password to clear this challenge right okay so uh, it says congratulations mizra al whatever right so i have been trying all this as a password and fortunately this particular data i could copy and use it here and say submit wow it was able to help us the password right the, so the entered username and password was right we are already on this stage 20 in case uh, you uh, have any queries on this particular attack feel free to post your message on the comment section below the interesting thing is this is a brute force attack this brute force attack can be of two forms one is you can do it over a http basic method one is on a http form the one we have done is called the http form based method because it's inside a web application right uh and the http basic method is when you get a pop up uh that is posted by the browser itself not through a js right if you use a router and try to log into a router most of the times last for the username and a password using a http uh, basic method right in this case you are able to do a brute force on both parameter and arrive to a particular status uh, code with which you know that you are successfully able to clear the challenge by doing a brute force on both the fields right in case you found this interesting in case you think someone else would love to see a content like this consider sharing and subscribing thank you